and order of the day for the next sitting. Ah. Private Members Business Notice No. 5, Australian Defence Force and Humanitarian Aid Missions. Motion. I call the Honourable Member for Solomon. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. I move the motion relating to the Australian Defence Force and Humanitarian Aid Missions in the terms in which it appears on the notice paper. Thank you, Member for Solomon. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, the people of Solomon include a very high proportion of men and women of the Australian Defence Force, around 5,000 uniformed defence personnel, and I note that you also have a very uh, large defence contingent in your electorate. Within the electorate, all three services are represented with major bases, uh, including the Royal Australian Navy at HMAS Coonawarra, Australian Army at Robinson Barracks and Larrakia Barracks, the Air Force at, uh, at RAF Base Darwin. Over the last uh, decade, the sailors, soldiers and airmen of my electorate, and, and indeed yours, Madam Deputy Speaker, and uh, yours, Madam um, the Member for Canberra, have served with distinction in a wide variety of combat and humanitarian functions around the world. It is one of those humanitarian missions which has prompted me to bring the motion to the House today. On the 25th of April this year, a violent earthquake shook the Himalayas near the Nepalese capital Kathmandu. The earthquake, measuring in uh, 7.8 on the Richter scale, and left around 8,000 people dead and hundreds and thousands of people homeless. Infrastructure, including power plants and transmission lines, water, water pipes and the sewage network, were left in ruins. Road and bridges that are needed to trans, uh, port, transport food from the fields to the cities were destroyed. Within hours of the earthquake striking, I was contacted by representatives of the Nepalese community in Darwin. They were obviously very distressed and were asking what could be done to, you know, to assist them. The Nepalese Association of the Northern Territory called an emergency meeting that afternoon and I was absolutely honoured to attend. Within a few hours of that meeting, we'd raised $14,000. Uh, they went on to raise another $60,000 and they should be commended for their effort. The Australian government extended an immediate offer of emergency funding but as a clear picture emerged of the scale of the disaster and the need of the aid, it was the C-17 and the RAF crews that were turned to. By the 29th of April, two C-17s had, had uh, taken off from Amberley, bound for Kathmandu with six tonnes of tarpaulin, six tonnes of medical supplies, five tonnes of woolen blankets, two RAF aerial medical evacuation teams and 80,000 water purification tablets. On their return trips, the planes carried hundreds of Australian citizens out of the mountains to begin their journeys home. Among them were two very grateful uh, constituents of mine, um, Suya and Saraja, uh, and uh, it was great that they were actually brought back home safely. The story was similar for Vanuatu after tropical cyclone Pam, the third most intense storm ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere that smashed the Pacific nation. The C-17 and the professionals of the Royal Australian Air Force who operate these uh, monstrous aircraft were able to, be, to deliver helicopters from Australia to Vanuatu within hours rather than the days it would have taken by sea. These helicopters in turn were able to get to the remote islands and areas cut off by flooding to evacuate people and deliver crucial aid. Madam Dep Deputy Speaker, it's important that we commend all the men and women of the Australian Defence Force who were involved in these works and to acknowledge the foresight displayed in the acquisition of two additional Globemaster C-17A strategic airlift uh, aircraft. It's not, on, it's not gone uh, without notice in my electorate, particularly among the uniformed men and women who I'm so proud to represent that uh, they are much better off under a coalition government. The, uh, the previous Rudd Labor government reduced defence force spending to its lowest level as a percentage of GDP since 1938. Under the coalition government, $7.2 billion is being invested in defence equipment in the coming financial year. New C-17 uh, aircraft and associated equipment, P-18 Poseidon maritime patrol aircrafts, Triton unmanned aerial vehicles and 58 
additional joint strike fighters. Madam Deputy Speaker, as I said, I'm so proud to represent the sailors, soldiers and airmen of my electorate here in this place, and I commend them for their professional and contribution to these valuable humanitarian miss missions. Thank you, Minister Solomon. Is there a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, 